Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to take a look at the Transformers Legacy Evolution of Buzzworthy Bumblebee Trooper Builder Multi-Pack Animated Universe Auto Trooper. Let me know what you think of this figure in the comment section down below. Is it a pickup or a pass? Now let's take a look at the figure's packaging. So here we have the packaging, starting at the very front, we have Transformers on the side, we have the Buzzworthy Bumblebee logo at the bottom of the box, done in black text, we also do have the Trooper Builder multi-pack, also done in black text, with a huge artwork shot showing off all four figures included in this pack or set. We also do have Decepticon Seeker, Quintesson Trooper, G2 Universe, Cybertronian Trooper, and Animated Universe Auto Trooper, all done in white text, and if we do look at the top of the box, we have product shots showing off all four figures included in this set again and we also do have a few images on the side of the box like Megatron, Optimus Prime and Bumblebee and if we do flip this box all the way around this is a very massive long box but if we do look at the back of the box we have product shots of all four figures in their robot and alt modes also a small image of the figures that include an alternate head sculpt also it does show off uh, the number of steps it does take to transform each figure so the Decepticon Seeker transforms in 27 steps the Quintesson Trooper transforms in 16 steps the G2 Universe Cybertronian Trooper transforms in 18 steps, and the Animated Universe Auto Trooper transforms in 14 steps. And that is pretty much it for the packaging. So let's now get into the review. Here we have Auto Trooper in his robot mode. Let's take a look at the details. Starting at the very top with the head sculpt, we have some really nice white for the entire helmet section, with some black for the sides of the face, some turquoise blue for the visor, and some more black for the goggles at the top of the forehead. There's some really nice Energon blue for the entire chest. I do like that huge piece of transparent blue with a very classic Autobot symbol done in red, with some more white and black for the entire rest of the chest, with some more black for the shoulder, with some more turquoise blue at the pretty much outer part of the shoulder, with some really nice surface detailing, some really cool tubing and wiring, with some more black for the hand and some areas of the bicep as well. And if we do look at the top of the legs, mostly done in black for the crotch and the hips and the top of the legs with some really nice surface detailing as well. And I do like these black stripes at the front of the legs with some more black for the feet. And if we do look at that side profile, overall not looking too bad. Very little kibble, very little uh, of really anything just sticking off the back of the figure. And I do like these really cool canisters or kind of cannons sticking out the back there as well. And this port here, if you're wondering what that's for, that'll come into play in just a sec. But overall, pretty well filled in. There's just a few hollow gaps pretty much at the back and the back of the arms. But for a deluxe class figure, that's really not that bad. But that is it for details. So now for articulation, if you do have any previous use of this mold, so Ironhide, Crosshair, Ratchet, you know exactly what to expect. So starting at the very top with that head, of course, the head can look up and down, tilt side to side, look left and right. The arm can move out and in, forward and back. There is a bicep rotation and elbow bend to about 90. There is also a wrist rotation. And if we do move the arms all the way out just to get some extra clearance, so of course, the waist can rotate all the way around completely unhindered. Of course, the legs can also kick forward, back, out to the side. There is rotation at the top of the leg. There is a knee bend. And there is also an ankle pivot to a very good degree. So overall articulation is very impressive. Really no complaints. And tolerances are not that bad. Probably my only complaint for the tolerances is these panels don't really want to stay tabbed. And even though there is actually an assigned tab and slot for the panel, they just don't really want to stay. But a very minor complaint. Let me just quickly straighten up the figure. Then we can actually talk about his accessories. So he actually does come with an alternate head 
also with a really cool new slider system. So this is actually the third kind of multi-pack or multi-set apart of the Targa exclusive subline called the Buzzworthy Bumblebee. There was a Creatures Collide. I'm pretty sure there was a Worlds Collide as well. There's been quite a few. And most of them in the past and other figures or part of Stu Series and Legacy have actually had alternate head sculpts. And before, the typical format would be pretty, pretty much just rip off the head. You pretty much just yank it off the ball joint. And I never really liked doing that. If you actually saw any of my previous reviews of those figures, you actually probably were aware that I never actually showed the alternate head sculpt on the figure because I never took it off. I never swapped them out because I was always worried that there would be um, damage on the head sculpt or the figure. Maybe something could break or a stress mark, but they actually improved that majorly with this new system. So I'm going to try and show it because the heads are actually very stiff. I do have to say the system is better. It's a really cool slider system, but it takes quite a bit of force to take the head off the entire mechanism or slider system. So I'm going to try and show it as smooth and easy right now, but you're just going to pretty much grab the entire head. And you can actually see there's the entire slider system at the back of the head and you just slide it off like that. You do have to grab it pretty good. If you don't, it can be pretty hard, but how all this works is, as you can see, there is two tabs and a post right there. And of course there is corresponding slots and ports on this entire head on the inside. And of course, removing that head. And if you do want to swap on the new one, it's the exact same format and connections. You just plug that back into place. And there we have the alternate head sculpt. And this one looks absolutely crazy. I actually do want to take a look at the details of the new head sculpt. So, um, Really cool dark red for the entire visor, some more white for the entire helmet section with some really cool kind of canisters or tubing at the sides of the face and the head. I guess these could probably be more goggles if you want to say that, but it definitely looks very kind of gas mask in nature. Definitely very gas mask inspired to me. That's just me anyway, but a very cool head sculpt. And please do let me know in the comments of the two head sculpts that are included with this figure. Which one do you prefer? I'm going to try and hold them side by side, but my hands are absolutely huge. I probably do prefer this one, but it, which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments below, but I definitely prefer this one. But that is it for that alternate head sculpt. As far as weaponry and, of course, his actual weapons go, he does come with one weapon, which is sort of a two-in-one. You'll understand why I say that in just a sec, but detail-wise, he has a really cool hammer. I do like the really nice metallic blue, kind of turquoise blue for these bullets. You might be wondering why that's there. That'll come into play in just a sec, but I do love all the glossy black for the entire rest of the weapon. Definitely could use some paint. I actually far... Um, enjoy or actually prefer the one with Ironhide much more than this because Ironhide of course was from Siege so he had some really cool battle damage and brush work there was like gummo gray silver dark gray black red it was just tons of really cool colors I do know of course that was kind of specific for that line and of course that sort of uh thing that kind of gimmick you know that main thing a part of that line was battle damage and brush work that's not really for legacy or legacy evolution but definitely could use some silver or something like that to make the details pop because there's actually some really nice details, you know, sculpted in here, but not very noticeable considering the entire thing is pretty much one solid color. But uh, there is several posts. You can actually have the figure hold in several different ways. Of course, there's a handle here and here. So if you want the figure to hold the hammer, you know, a bit higher up or a bit lower down, I think that's a pretty nice option. But you can just plug this in his hand like that or either hand really doesn't matter. And I think that looks really cool. If you know me, if you're a long time viewer of the channel, you know, I love melee weapons, swords, axes, hammers, just really really enjoy them. I think this looks so cool. I think that looks really, really awesome. But this is actually a two-in-one weapon, as I mentioned before. So if you do get the entire sort of, you know, hammer main section, the actual tip of the hammer, you can hinge this down like that. So it actually forms the entire barrel or sort of tip section of the weapon. And that's where those bullets come into play. And there is actually two posts there for blast type pieces. So you can create some really cool poses and effects. I actually do have a few poses in the beginning image intro, so make sure you don't skip that. And this is actually helpful for pretty much both the weapons. Of course, you can attach blast type pieces for the actual blaster so it looks like it's firing but if you want to of course in the actual hammer mode or the hammer form you can actually attach some there to make it look like it's actually impacting or maybe you know destroying the ground so there's a lot of really fun playable features with this but you can store this in the hand multiple ways I know a lot of people have pulled off some really crazy poses you know of like both arms like holding the weapon it's pretty hard to because I definitely think this probably should have been a tad bit longer I know it's a bit hard to actually have the weapon uh, you know be in good proportion 
proportion or size with the actual figure because this is you know a two-in-one weapon they don't want the blaster to be too small but they don't want the hammer to be too uh, big so it's a bit hard to kind of have both make sense but it would have been nice if this was a tad bit bigger because it's pretty hard to actually have him hold uh, both hands on this weapon so I typically kind of just do one um, but there is actually another way he can store this weapon on his back, and that's where that port comes into place. And I do have to say, that's actually one really cool detail Hasbro didn't have to do, because sometimes when it comes to weapon storage, it's kind of a two-use thing. You know, there might be a post or a port, really depends on the situation or the figure, but sometimes that post or port will have multiple uses, like it might be used for the, you know, transformation and also weapon storage. This is actually only used for weapon storage, so that's pretty cool, kind of showing, you know, Hasbro put a lot of thought into this figure, but I think that's a pretty cool way to store it kind of draped over his back and i think that looks so cool and of course the main way is you can store this in either hand like that and since it's such a long weapon you do have to have the arm you know completely extended and straight out but as i mentioned before you probably can have both hands you know hold it but it's pretty hard to do us i've seen some people do it but it's not that easy to do especially when recording but i think that looks very very cool that is it for accessories and a weapons let's now get down to a few quick comparisons here he is with his pack mate that being the quintesson trooper and his separate review is coming very soon on the channel and for another pack mate here he is with the g2 universe cybertronian trooper i think they look pretty cool and for one final comparison here he is with the original Siege Deluxe Class Ironhide. And I think they look very cool side by side. And let me know in the comments of all the variations or versions of this mold, which one is your favorite. So there's, you know, there's Ironhide, there's Crosshairs, there's Ratchet, there's Auto Trooper. I think of the Decos, maybe not, you know, enjoyability. There is a few kind of quality control tolerance problems on this figure that could be a tad bit better, but the deco wise, the design, I have to say, probably Auto Trooper is my favorite. Let me know in the comments which one's yours. But that is it for comparisons and this robot mode. Let's now get down to to transformation. So now for transformation, in case you're wondering if it matters which head sculpt is currently on the figure during transformation, no, it does not matter. You could have the head sculpt with the blue visor or the red visor with the tubes. It doesn't affect or prevent the transformation at all. I actually just kind of randomly pick the one with the blue visor. It really doesn't matter. But as for the first step, you're actually going to get this entire chest panel here, hinge this entire section down and out like that. And how this is tied in place is there is a huge tab right here and two slots are kind of notches on the inside of the chest. Then you're actually going to disconnect the entire head and fold this entire assembly inside this entire cavity inside the chest and there's a tab there and a slot right there that's how the head was tabbed in place then you're actually going to flip to the back of the figure there's this entire backpack piece or bumper piece you're actually going to hinge this entire assembly down like that then you can actually go back to the front of the chest here and you're actually going to use this double hinge that's a part of the chest panel and just fold this entire assembly up so just make sure this entire panel here is flush with pretty much the stomach region or kind of the bottom section of the chest like that then you're actually going to get both shoulders and hinge these up and into place like that and as you can see there is a tab on this side of the arm and of course a corresponding slot on the other arm in that same spot and then you're just going to align that up and tab that into place like that and there we have pretty much the entire roof and front portion of the truck all done now we're actually going to focus on the legs you're actually going to hinge out both these panels on the sides of the legs and how these were tied in places there is a tab there and a slot right there and then you're actually going to get this panel that kind of forms the entire front half or front section of the leg also fold this out as well and fold this panel out as well and there is a tab on the inside of this leg and of course a corresponding slot on the other side of the other leg like that and then just to line all that make sure that's nice and compressed then you're actually going to get this entire front portion here it's actually kind of a rotating or sort of a swivel you're actually just going to rotate this entire assembly all the way around and down and into place like that and as you can see there is quite a few tabs and slots pretty much all across all these panels and of course corresponding slots and connections on the actual roof and all of that is just going to align into place like that and then you can actually get these side panels there is a slot there and a tab on the inside of that panel that will just tab in nice and securely like that and then you're going to get the entire front bumper that will just slide into place nice and securely and that is it for transformation let's now take a look
at the details. Here we have Auto Trooper in his truck or van alt mode. Let's take a look at the details, starting at the very front edge. I like all this glossy black for the entire front grille section here with some really cool tubing and wiring sculpted into place. I do like all these really cool kind of turrets or cannons, which are blast heavy compatible in case you're wondering. I do like the turquoise or metallic blue for the front headlights with a very classic auto symbol done in red with the really cool arrows also detailed there. And I do like the energon blue for the entire front windscreen there with a few posts for some blast pieces so it can show or make it look like it's actually being under attack or on fire or exploding which i think is a pretty cool playable feature i do like more of that glossy black and kind of turquoise metallic blue for this entire roof section with some really nice surface detailing sculpted in and if we do turn to the side definitely i think the look is kind of ruined a bit because there's quite a few panel lines and quite a few hinges also of course the feet are staking out the back that was one of the major talking points and one of the major complaints when the first siege deluxe class iron high was first released quite a few people had a problem with it so then of course they did retool it heavily into an earthrise iron hide to try and fix that problem and still people weren't satisfied because you could still tell the feet were sticking out the back also of course there was parts forming involved which people didn't like i never really was bothered by parts forming and then of course hasbro finally released the 86 iron hide from the Stu series line and they were actually finally satisfied so i do hope maybe they can actually take this auto trooper deco and actually maybe uh, do a repaint of the earthrise iron hide or maybe the Stu series 86 Iron Hide, either one of those would be so cool to see because I actually really do like this deco. There is a few bits of ugliness on the side, but I have to say, I do like all these really cool panels and kind of wires and nut and bolt detailing sculpted in. I think they probably could have used a few extra pants to make them a bit more, you know, prominent, a bit more noticeable because it's all white, so it's a bit hard to see. I have to get pretty close to notice it. Um, and the feet do stick out the back, but you actually do have to look at the bottom of the feet. Really, the place you would actually never expect to have much detail sculpted in. There is actually two Megatech ports, so you could probably attach some blaster pieces and have it look like it's blasting off into battle. So that's a pretty cool effect. Again, I'm not a big fan of the feet, but I actually have to say, I do like all the detail sculpt in there. and makes it, I guess, a little bit more tolerable. And I do like the black stripe on the side as well. And the wheels, all of them are mushroom peg, but you really can't tell that they're mushroom peg. It's not a visible mushroom peg, so I'm personally not that bothered and I think it overall rolls very well across any surface. As for accessory storage, of course, he does come with that second alternate head sculpt. So that one you really have to put off to the side. There's no really hidden way to store the head sculpt. You know, there's no compartment or anything. You know, he only has one head and one, of course, post to store that head. So you really have to choose which one's in the truck or van and which one's off to the side in like a bag or of course maybe on your shelf or table. But as for his weaponry, his actual hammer blaster, this can actually store or on the top there is four mech tech ports so it actually gives you some decent options so you can maybe store a bit closer to the front or closer to the back and of course you can choose it to be on the left or the right side so it's kind of a nice option i'm going to choose this side i actually want the weapon to sit a bit closer to the front of the vehicle and i think that looks really cool and again i'm actually so happy with this weapon i was actually so excited for this weapon when ironhide was first revealed and put out because i love hammers and i love the bazooka and i also do like all that metallic blue sculpted in for the bullets and the missiles just an insanely well detailed and sculpted weapon but now let's get into some vehicle mode comparisons so here he is with a pack mate that being the g2 universe cybertronian warrior or trooper and i think they look pretty cool side by side and his separate review is coming very soon on the channel make sure you stay tuned for that and let me know in the comments of all four figures in this trooper builder multi-pack which one is your favorite let me know in the comments i really can't choose right now maybe actually once i review all four figures separately maybe i'll do like one big group review and maybe i'll do from like my favorite to my least favorite if you'd like to see a video like that let me know in the comments that's it for that comparison and for one final comparison, here he is with his mold mate, that being the original, the Transformers Siege Deluxe Class Ironhide. I think they look absolutely awesome side by side. Mold wise, they're the exact same thing, of course, just a heavy redeco or repaint. The only real change you can see, of course, is the head sculpt, but that's really the uh, mold change, of course, for the actual robot. You can somewhat see that they have different head sculpts through the window or the windscreen there. And speaking of the window or the windscreen, there is one major thing that I definitely prefer on this version of the mold over the original Ironhide. It's actually how they tinted and actually have a colored piece of plastic for the windscreen rather than a clear piece of plastic. And you might be wondering, why do I like the color piece of plastic over the clear? Well, I do like clear plastic. It's pretty cool for windows, you know, or windscreens. I think it usually looks pretty good on pretty much any vehicle or jet or figure. But I think in this spot and in this situation, it wasn't the best idea because since it's clear plastic, you can pretty much see the entire Ironhide head. And since his head is 
pretty much completely red. It really does stick out like a sore thumb. It's very noticeable. You can actually see the entire little slot and the ball joint of the head there. You can still see the head of the auto trooper, but it's actually tinted blue, so it's definitely not as noticeable. Also, since the back of his head is white, it pretty much blends in with the rest of the figure and the vehicle, so I really don't mind as much. So I think clear plastic on Ironhide probably wasn't the best idea for that figure, but that is it for comparisons and the alt mode. Let's now get down to reverse transformation. So now for reverse transformation, what you want to do is start at the very front. You're actually going to untab the entire front bumper section or grill section like that and just hinge this entire piece down. Then you're actually going to go to the side, get this entire panel here, untab that. How this is tabbed in place is there is a tab and a slot. Then you're actually just going to kind of fold that back like that. Do the exact same process on the other side. Just fold that panel back. Then we're going to go to the legs. You're actually going to open up these panels, just kind of split them down the middle. You actually might have to move those panels out of the way just to kind of accommodate all the pieces moving around then you can actually get the arms untab them from the legs how they were tabbed in place is there is two tabs here and of course slots on the underside of the arms and then of course you can actually just get this entire arm assembly and just rotate this all the way around and back up into place now we're actually going to go back to the legs so you can actually get the entire panel here fold this in to form the entire front of the leg do the same thing on their side and then of course there is a tab and a slot on the outer part of this panel that will just fold down and tap into place fold down tap into place and there we have the legs all done and fully completed then you can actually go to the arms and the shoulders just actually split them down the middle there is a tab on this side and a corresponding slot on this side of the arm and then you're just going to move the entire shoulder and arm all the way down like that and let me just quickly straighten him up and bring the arms down and then you can actually just get the entire chest panel open that up then you can actually bring out the head you're actually going to go to the back here get the entire bumper section just hinge this in and then of course there is a tab pretty much on the plate that the head sits on and there is a slot there and that's just going to tab into place like that and then you're going to use this entire double hinge there is an entire tab or kind of huge bar piece right here and there's two Two notches on the inside of the chest and that will just align up and a tab into place and of course the very last step he does have to have his weapon so you can grab his huge bazooka or missile launcher and plug that in his hand and that is it for reverse transformation let's now get down to the final thoughts now for my final thoughts on the Transformers Legacy Evolution Buzzworthy Bumblebee Trooper Builder Multi-Pack Animated Universe Auto Trooper. Now make sure you keep in mind this figure is a part of a Target exclusive 4-pack, which I'll be reviewing the other three figures separately coming on the channel very soon. Auto Trooper is using the Siege Ironhide mold with the same blaster hammer weapon and two alternate head sculpts. Speaking of alternate head sculpts, Haver developed a new system of removing the head sculpt and swapping out with a new one. They added this new slider system to several other figures in the pack. I much prefer this new system over the old way of just yanking the head off the ball joint, which could cause breakage or stress marks to the figure. As far as the deco of the figure goes, I like the glossy black and the Energon blue with the bright white, and I'd love to see this deco used again on the Studio Series 86 Ironhide mold. Articulation-wise, pretty impressive for a deluxe class figure. Unfortunately, due to the new slider system in the head, the head is less poseable than the previous versions of this mold. Tolerances are pretty good, but a few of the panels on the sides of the legs could could tab in more securely. Transformation is very simple, straightforward, and fun, and the Vanner truck mode looks very futuristic, war-torn, and a battery with awesome surface detailing and cool sculpted and cans which are plastic piece compatible. My biggest complaint about this van mode is the feet just stick out the back which doesn't look the best. Let me know what you think of this figure in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this review and I will see you next time.